From the beginning, those of us who supported Trayvon Martin's parents said this case was about one thing, justice. George Zimmerman should have been arrested after killing Trayvon, but he wasn't. He walked free. For weeks now, right-wing talkers have mischaracterized the entire effort, accusing Trayvon supporters of politicizing the issue and injecting race into the case. The Trayvon Martin situation caused happiness somewhere in the civil rights community because it gave them a shot in the arm. It, it, it launched them. It allowed them to get in gear and to start leveling the charges that they always love to make about the country. None of us were there, and I know people trying to put t this together, but I would argue there's been a rush to judgment. Is the media now inciting racial violence? That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. It was pathetic last night watching a primetime cable opinion programs whip up the Trayvon Martin case to dangerous levels. A Wall Street Journal column said, quote, Trayvon's sad, fate <laughs> Trayvon's sad fate clearly sent a quiver of perverse happiness all across America's civil rights establishment. Perverse happiness? That's outrageous. Of course, all these critics are missing the point altogether. This case has always been about bringing attention to a case that somewhere someone was trying to sweep under the rug. And we made that clear from the start. I did not come to Florida after talking to Sabrina and Tracy and Trump and Fox to convict Zimmerman. I didn't come to try Zimmerman. I come to say what is good for one is good for all. I'm going to fight until Demerman meets justice in the courtroom. This is not anti anybody. There are whites, blacks, Latinos, Asians that have marched with us, that stand with us. We are not running a hate campaign. This is a love campaign. Joining me now is Joan Walsh, editor at large of Salon.com, also an MSNBC political analyst. Her latest article is about the importance of the activist movement in Trayvon's case. Thanks for joining me, Joan. Joan, uh, let me ask you. Uh, let me ask you a question. Would George Zimmerman be in jail today without the activist community, in your opinion? In my opinion, I don't think so. I really don't see any evidence that that would be the case. You know, I went back last night, I apologize, it's a little belated, but I went back and I read the initial days of coverage, and I saw the way until uh, Trayvon's parents got lawyers, spoke out, spoke from the heart, began asking questions, there was silence. And then, you know, Police Chief Bill Lee, his first response was to defend George Zimmerman, to literally say, there is evidence, we have evidence, that that he acted in self-defense. He told the Sanford Herald reporter that if they had arrested George Zimmerman, it would have violated his civil rights. So he was far more concerned about the civil rights of George Zimmerman than of Trayvon Martin. We know that for a fact. Well, let me show uh, you what, what he said on March 12th. This is what the Sanford Police Chief Bill Lee said on March 12th. Right. Mr. Zimmerman, has made the statement of self-defense until we can establish probable cause to um, to dispute that we don't have the grounds to arrest him so he clearly stated he was not going to arrest him contrary to what some are saying now is that activists and people like me uh, didn't give him a chance he says he wasn't going to do it right he was acting like he was, he was Zimmerman's lawyer or his PR person, rather than, uh, you know, a law enforcement official seeking the truth, seeking what actually happened. And had he come out and said, hey, we're still investigating and we're very concerned about this too, I think things would have unfolded very differently. But it, it was a moment where it felt like this was being ignored and an unarmed young black man was, had been shot uh, and, and no one seemed to care about it. So I think it was absolutely appropriate for people like 
like yourself and others to get involved. And I was frankly shocked uh, at the backlash, at the people who suggested that the wheels of justice were turning uh, and other people were, were kind of being vigilantes. All we wanted, those of us who were asking questions, was for the justice system to work. And it belatedly is working. But I believe that's because of the questions. Well, let me show you a New York Post front page headline. This headline uh, front page, Trayvon Hoodwink, tragedy hijacked by hus race hustlers. And you know what's interesting to me? You say you're shocked. I'm not shocked. I mean, I've uh, been in this I all know. my life. You're going to be attacked. But what, what I think the public needs to know is in the case of many of us, we were called in by the family. You don't hijack something. Right. I never heard of this case until they called and asked uh, for us to be involved. So at least the public ought to know facts. And it's funny to me, Joan, I remember last year New York Times wrote an article why I did not get involved in the case of the IMF uh, uh, <laughs> rape case. Now they're asking why I am involved. So either way, you're going to get it. But what I think right. you wrote what was striking is, and I'm quoting your article, where you say, I've been impressed by the fact that the movement to defend Martin mostly stayed away from demands for vengeance or punishment. For the most part, people were demanding information about uh, that apparently shoddy police procedures. And I think that's really the point here. There was no demands, there was no vengeance, there was no violence. Not one rock was thrown. None. So there's no, no it... irresponsible behavior here at all. No, and I've been attacked today on Twitter by conservatives uh, calling what you all did a, quote, lynch mob, lynch mob, with no irony about lynch mobs, Reverend Al. So, you know, the, the hysteria on the right about this case uh, and the depiction of, of George Zimmerman as the victim, it's really a, a tiresome narrative where a certain kind of right-wing uh, white person acts like somehow whites are the victims in these situations. I was very impressed by the fact that people were not acting as judge and jury. They, I can't speak for everyone, and I didn't read every single statement that anybody made, obviously, but the consistent demands from the family and from the spokespeople were for answers and for an investigation and to get to the bottom of what happened uh, that night, not for anything in particular and certainly not for anything bad uh, to happen to George Zimmerman. Not, not, a, not at all. Uh, I want to bring in Kevin Cunningham, who started the petition at change.org drawing the attention uh, of, of making really go viral of Trayvon's story. The petition now mm -hmm. has more than 2.2 million signatures. Kevin, how did online activism and your petition in particular help draw attention to this case? Well, I think that originally there was next to no mainstream media coverage. I think there was only local coverage, and it was the the petition as a starting point. It gave us something to uh, to put out on Facebook, to put out on Twitter, kind of as a focus point for that. And and it, it didn't take long. I mean, I, I think that the facts of the case spoke to people very quickly and um, kind of instantly engaged them. And, and we saw that despite. Some people who have been alienated or, or whatever else, I think in a human perspective, white people, black people all understood how wrong this was initially and were able to do whatever it was. It's not a lot to sign a petition online. It's very easy to do, but it's, um, I, I also think it's, it's an emotionally healthy thing to do. It gives somebody an opportunity to participate. And people responded. I mean, the people all over the world, all races, all nationality, were astounded that there just wasn't an arrest here. That's, I, I remember seeing a, a stream from a, a blogger from Lebanon who went crazy when they saw the story when a, a Muslim American a lady I know retweeted the petition and, it, and they were very upset by the fact. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a human issue. It's been trying to be broke down into a race issue, but we have a human tragedy here and I think that's what Absolutely. people understood. Well, I think you're right. And uh, Joan Walsh and Kevin Cunningham, thank you very much for your time tonight. Thanks, Reverend Al. Thanks.